Hey guys, I'm George and I'm really excited you just clicked on this video. The reason being that I get to explain to you how to fret curl the right way. You're probably thinking, what is this guy talking about? I've seen plenty of tutorials on this. I've seen so many YouTube videos on how to frag this, how to frag that, uh, and one quote I see the most is zoanthids. Nine out of ten of these videos on YouTube is showing you how to do it the wrong way, and in a way that is extremely dangerous and could hospitalize you, especially if you're working with toxic corals like zoanthids. I will show you what you need to do to prepare for fragging, and then an actual demonstration of how to frag zoanthids, a toxic coral the smart, efficient, and the right way. To frag the right way, you need the right preparation. This means two things, equipment and safety. For an easier and faster fragging experience, I highly recommend using Ecotech Marine's Coral Propagation Kit. It comes in a finely crafted bamboo storage box with strong magnetic closures and it doubles as a frag cutting board. The German stainless steel tools are really well made and have saved me a ton of time because of how much sharper and finer that they are compared to the makeshift ones. I used to use. The Coral Propagation Kit provides everything you need to successfully divide and propagate hard and soft coral. The high quality materials is what will really help you be efficient when fragging. It's got kiln ferred ceramic frag plugs in three different colors, Ecotech Coral Glue, which is very fast curing and pH balanced, tweezers, scissors, bone cutting forceps, and soft coral clamps. Yup, now on to safety, and this is what I'm talking about. Marine aquarium hobbyists should always wear protective gloves and eye protection when working or fragging corals in your reef tank. Some of the easiest corals to care for, like zoanthid polyps, can contain a very dangerous neurotoxin called palytoxin. And if you have zoos in your system, it's absolutely essential to wear gloves when working with them or around them. You could use surgical latex gloves or something heavy duty that goes all the way up uh, to your arm and keeps you dry. They will keep bacteria out of the tank and keep bacteria from the tank coming into your body. You also never know when a bristle worm might pop out of a rock and try to poke you. Anyway, whatever you got, wear them and dig around for a pair of swimming goggles. As ridiculous as you will look, they will work fine and you'll be protected. I have these fancy ones only because my high school makes me get them mandatory for chemistry class. Uh, so please, though, I can't stress enough that you need to wear this stuff when fragging zoanthids and other potentially toxic corals. I've read so many stories about people cutting themselves, wiping their eyes, breathing in boiled rock fumes, all when dealing with toxic corals that have nearly killed them. This is dangerous stuff, so don't play around. Alright, enough talk. Let's get to the fragging. This is my 30 gallon tank. The lights just turned on, so I'm gonna try to spot what I want to frag uh, before turning the lights off and actually fragging them. This is a colony of my radioactive dragon eyes that's been growing out quite nicely. It's starting to grow onto other rocks, which is great because I get to propagate it, um, but at the same time, I can't take the entire rock out of the tank, so it's gonna have to be an in-tank fragging, which can be very dangerous with zoanthids. Try to look for a place where zoanthids are dislodged or where they're going to be very easy to scrape underneath them. In this case, right where they've grown onto the rock next to them is the best place to scrape underneath them. Now I turn off the lights to reduce the stress on the corals and using my scissors from my coral kit, I'm trying to very softly get underneath the footing of the zoanthids and trying to dislodge them a little bit. Here it's, it's a little bit easier to see. They will retract a little bit and they are gonna expel their toxins. Um, and since we're doing an in-tank fragging, the, what we're gonna do after we get the polyps out of the tank is a water change because these zoanthids, what they're releasing, can really uh, stress out other corals and could be potentially a tank ending frag session if you don't do that water change. Now in reality this is going to take quite a bit of time uh, but what I'm trying to do is just kind of loosen them. I, You can completely dislodge them but I'm just trying to loosen them so I can get my tweezers uh, and kind of pull them, grab them off the rock. So see how they're loose like that? Now I take the tweezers and I try to grab hold of them 
and it's a lot easier this way to kind of pull them off safely without killing them. And I'm kind of picking at them here, trying to get a bunch of them together in one clean swoop. If you're doing an in-tank fragging like this, uh, the water change is very crucial, but at the same time, you don't want to frag too many polyps at a time, uh, or this could be a toxin overload for your tank. Once you get the polyps, I just put them in a little container of water that's sitting in my filter. Now on to the fragging station. So right next to my tank, about two feet away on a little table, I set up my fragging station, which is my frag kit and anything else I'm going to need to do the fragging. Your safety equipment is essential in this part of the fragging. Also make sure your tools are organized. I did a pretty good job getting the polyps off the rock unharmed. Here's a closer look. Alright, let's get started. So I have this little piece of substrate and there's some pointy things coming off of it I don't really like so I'm going to use my bone cutters. Uh, to easily cut off something that's uh, poking out that I don't think anyone who wants this frag would want. Then I'm just applying a tiny bit of glue and this is where the tweezers uh, are so important. It's so much easier to pick up the zoanthids with tweezers than your fingers and I'm just going to gently place them on there and the tweezers also help you position them the right way, um, something your hands simply just can't do. And within maybe 30 seconds, I have a really clean, nice looking frag. It's got about five to six pops on it, and all I have to do now is put it into the water to secure the glue. And now I'm going to be fragging um, the same coral, those zoanthid pops, but this time on one of Ecotech Marine's frag plugs. They don't look fake, they come in really nice uh, colors. Uh, this one's the gray one, and I'm just gonna add a, a little dip of glue. Same thing with the tweezers. This is where all these tools come in uh, very handy. They save a lot of time because you're not fussing around with them. You can get the job done very quickly. And just very gently I'm gonna slowly place them exactly how they're gonna do best okay and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the soft coral clamps because the whole thing is too small for me to hold on to it into the water I'm gonna use the clamps to secure the zoanthid polyps onto the frag plug while I dip it in the water so it secures the glue. This is something that I could do with my hands but it would possibly kill the zoanthids because of the pressure of my fingers. And two frags it is. So they came out really well. Um, so much easier than if you're using makeshift tools. And now I'm just gonna give them a quick iodine dip before I put them back in the tank. And don't forget that water change. This is how the frags look a few days later. They're already out and look just like they had looked right when I fragged them. And that's it. So I hope this video helped you uh, getting to know some essential information uh, you need when fragging zoanthids or toxic corals or corals just in general. If the video helped you, click the subscribe button uh, and like the video below. It only takes a second. Click that share button so I can help other people frag the right way too. Uh, it's been a pleasure explaining this kind of stuff to you. Uh, look into Ecotech Marine uh, and their propagation kit. It's a really good kit. I really recommend it. Uh, thanks again. George out.